you know, our, our challenge is I'm dealing with 900 young people, uh, 370 staff. Um, in, in any student situation, uh, and I, had, I am a parent of a first year med student at Michigan and a freshman at Michigan. I don't really worry about the first year med student. That's <laughs> right. But the freshman at Michigan, him, I do worry about. It. But I, it's like that with the other 900 plus student that I have. You know, we make a, a commitment, a long time commitment we've made to say Michigan is your family. And with that, we have to treat, I treat them like that. Like I had one who's uh, in the hospital uh, last night because uh, riding her bike got hit by a car. <coughs> She's okay, but she got hit by a car riding her bike uh, on campus yesterday in the rain, accident uh, happened. Um, but I get the text, I'm in Detroit at the time, and you know, keeping up on the information and making sure uh, that I know what she's doing, what, what's going on with her. So for, for us, for me, it doesn't, the, the challenge really starts with our students uh, that we have. It starts with academics. I can tell you, uh, you all, 474, more than half of our student athletes have a 3.0 or higher as they compete in athletics. For those who have been in athletics, after last semester, 900 student athletes, only 11 were below a two point. Lower than the university population below by 0.2%, 0.02%, so very small. But our student athletes, 11, that's the first time, I, that is immensely small. And coach will be glad to hear, only one played the sport of football. And he and I know the battles, because I led academics. Fritz knows the battles that we have to get kids to understand you're not here to participate in sports first. You're not here to participate in sports first. Every year, every year, Coach Carr had a theme. The theme of the 97 championship, and, and help me coach if I get this wrong, was reaching the summit. What was, what was the actual name? Is that right? Yep. Mount Everest. Mount Everest, reaching the summit. Yeah, pickaxe. Hanging from the wall for each individual player. The most well read person that I ever met is right here. Influenced me. You go in my office right now. <laughs> Tons of books that I read. Now it's all on my iPad, so I keep going on books. <laughs> it's helped my back a lot. I don't have to carry it. But still reading to this day because of the influence of him. And so from a, from a challenge standpoint, and I guess I don't talk a lot about my problems. Lou Hope said, don't tell people your problems because 80% don't care and 20% are glad you have them. <laughs> <laughs> so you, don't, you, you, know, you, you sit around, you tell people. So when I walk in, in the morning, when I walk in at night, I have issues I immediately have to address. I know that already. They're sitting in that car waiting for me to drive down the State Street to address and I see my staff and they say, how are you doing? I say, I'm doing great. Or I say, awesome, terrific. It's not that I'm lying, but I, I have a terrific, awesome, great job that I get to do every day. Problems exist for all of us. So I don't reflect and I don't say, oh, I got this problem, this is a, and tell everybody all the things that are going on. Because we all have issues that we're dealing with on a daily basis. And in leadership, it's not lying. It's what I believe. 
I walked into this room this morning. It's a, it's a great day for me. Could it be filled two hours with other things to do? Absolutely. Certainly could. Certainly could for all of us. But ultimately, it's a... It's not a challenge if you're embracing and loving and passionate about the things that you do. Then it becomes a job. It becomes part of the normal things that you have to deal with that pop up. And so to me, it's about it's a lot about attitude. It's a lot about how you approach something, how your attitude is to your daily work, the things that you do. I'm not in this for money, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> I think Fritz visited the house I grew up in. My dad worked in the, in the post office for 40 years. <laughs> I wanted to be a social worker. You all know from the papers how much I make. I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm making more than I ever made. It, it's not about money. It's not about those things. It's about I'm passionate about what I do to help young people. Like I was helped through sports to get to the greatest university in the country and to do things I need to do. So the way I approach it is this, because I think that's what you're asking about. <coughs> There's five things I expect from our student athletes in our coaches and programs. One is that you compete academically. I just told you some data, we are competing in the classroom. Very proud of those young people. Two, we love to win championships. Now, I don't wear rings. I've won championships. I was a part of the staff when Lloyd won his national championship. Hockey staff when they won their championship. Six national championships. Countless conference championships. I don't wear the rings. Mainly because our former colleague and guy that worked for Lloyd, John Falk said, when asked, What's his favorite ring? He said the next one, right? Not because he didn't appreciate what he already had and what we achieved, but it was because you celebrate, you do the things that are necessary, and guess what? The next year there's another crop of freshmen coming through. Never had that experience. Never been a part of it. It's a new season. You have goals that you need to hit things that you need to do. And in essence, you can't live in the past. But I have a great collection in my office. And yeah. <laughs> Beautiful reflection of all those changes. <laughs> the third thing we want to do is uh, help our student athletes grow and develop. And in those three things, we want to take those first three things and help them go out in the world and prepare them for success at whatever they do. The best commercial that the NCAA has ever done is they say 98% of our student athletes will go pro in something other than sports. Mm -hmm. Now Michigan is a little lower, it's about 95%. <clears throat> because we have some great uh, uh, athletes who can go on to play professionally, go on to the Olympics, and do great things through sports, in sports for uh, even longer. But it's still, the super majority of our student athletes are going to take their education and go out and impact the world and do the things that are necessary to make a difference and that's what those first three prepare them to do we want to do all that within the rules and then coach told you i'm from new orleans so that means i want to have fun <laughs> right i want people to enjoy themselves and fun doesn't mean easy there's a lot of hard work when you have fun. But fun is looking back on the experience and saying, I would do that over if I could. All the hard work, all the dedication, all the yelling, that was done. <laughs> all those things, I look back on my career and experience as an undergrad. And I say, I want to do it again. I want to have that much fun doing all the things that I just did in the classroom, on the fields of play, in the environment of Michigan. And if I could create that 